Okay, the blinds, let's change the blinds back. Let's turn all those lights on. There we go. Now I need to change some of these values. What I'm going to do is I'm going to control these blinds up and down, the amount that they're up and down, because you can see at the moment they're, well, they're set to these settings. 10% up, uh, plus or minus 50%, so they're kind of all over the place. It doesn't look very natural at all. So what I'm going to do is just pause this for a moment. And I'm going to bring in gradient. I know that the building's 30 meters high, so I'm just going to change that bottom to 30. I'm going to plug that alpha channel into the blinds up down. I'll leave the plus minus on 50 for now. And let's just say I think F prime seems to be a lot more responsive to inputs into VRAM. It's almost interactive, which is quite useful for setting up these kind of effects because you want to get the look just right. I'm just going to change the position of the camera as well to get the whole building into view. There we go. <laughs> I was just wondering why this wasn't working, and obviously, because I'm an idiot, I haven't set the inputs to Y coordinate. There we go. You can see down there there's a rim where they're closed. All the rest of them are open. So you just play around until you find something that you like. Okay. This is what I've ended up with. It's it's not great, but it's okay. Just kind of it demonstrates the point anyway. Um, but what I'd also recommend that you do is uh, use a gradient to control the amount of lights that are on as well. I'll just do that now. I'll just quickly copy this one and have that open as well. That's quite handy. Let's go out of the way. Let's plug that in, that might help. Okay. I mean, uh, one thing is as well, you can see here, I've just used a duplicate of the existing gradient because the theory being that if there are more um, blinds open, there's probably more people there. But, you know, it's always nice to just change things around a little bit. I'll obviously spend a lot more time on this if this was for a... Uh, I'll do it like that. For a final round of it, like I said, this is just for demonstration purposes. You can spend quite a lot of time tweaking. And that's the good thing. That was one of the points, actually, was to be able to do things like this and change things en masse and then just have a sort of feel for how it looks to you, which is uh, one of the reasons why I've uh, endeavoured to get the... Uh, F prime integration a little bit better. Okay, that'll do for now, I think. So it's just a quick demonstration. There's another video I've done anyway on uh, using gradients to control lights. So, pushing on, let's quickly see if we can attend to the other two window surfaces. We've got the Way a bit down here. Let's see if we can't quickly set that up. Okay, I'll just bring in those. 
just use the material output straight away with this one. We shouldn't slow things down too much because it's uh, it's only a small part of the render. Okay, I want let's pause this. Mm, library medium. Let's change that back to a hundred. Oh, by the way, I increased the room depth on the uh, other rooms because they didn't seem deep enough for my liking. I'm just going to put this back to one though for this. And let's resume. See if we can't get a better look here. bad. Looks like something different's going on down there. What I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to change the tint to a slight nice light green colour just to give it a different sense of uh, what's going on down there. It's like some retail shop or outlet or something like that. Like sort of different lighting or, or something. I think that'll do. Radial mode. You know what? I think I'll turn that off for this. So we end up we should end up with like four kind of square rooms. I have neglected to put a floor in. There's no floor showing. Ah, I do believe that this uh, ground polygon. Let's just move that out of the way. This ground polygon here is probably fighting with it. There we go. You can see the floor a bit better now. Well, or at all. Okay. That looks okay to me. I think I'm going to come and also turn on the ray tracing shadows and reflections what's going on with our windows let's keep that off for now okay so I think that'll do Here's a note as well. Uh, a lot of people get confused when this happens. I'll just zoom into a bunch of rooms. But um, because VRoom caches such a lot of information, its uh, interaction with F Prime uh, still has a few holes in it. I don't think there's much that can be done. Um, but just to, to warn you anyway, if you move an object, if you move a VRoom object, basically the rooms stay where they are because that's their sort of cached location so if I move this off you see the rooms sort of stay where they are until eventually you can't see anything anymore and everything will be fine if you just sort of close F prime and start it up again as then some code gets executed which uh, makes it move all the rooms into the right place because essentially the rooms are sort of floating in space they just adhere to an object and read off it that objects um, uh, transform properties and position themselves accordingly. Okay, anyway, enough of that. Uh, one more room. One more bunch of windows to deal with. Let's just go up so we can see the penthouse. Let's go and add the VRoom node again. Quickly plug in the material. Oh, and also this one, all I did was unweld. Or did I? I guess I didn't. This is an example of what happens. Let's just move the camera up so you can all see a bit better. But yeah, it looks like what's happened here is just sort of one large room has formed. 
Yeah, I'm fine with that. Let's just leave it like that for now. I guess I tried to unweld the uh, polygons to form all different rooms, but it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to give this one a different colour tint. I'm a big fan of tints. Let's give it a nice orangey red. Okay. So we're going to turn on its window bulging. <laughs> 